Thank you. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Huh? Because it's weird. Because um, I would, if I was like a rapper, I'd be like, um, turn me up in the monitor because I can't hear myself. <laughs> but we don't have a monitor, so <laughs> so it doesn't. You can turn yourself up in the monitor, but it's it's a display. It's a monitor. <laughs> So um, before I start, for you to forgive me, I'm actually controlling Keynote with my Android phone because that's how I roll. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, Ruby simulators. Um, I actually have like a, like a whole day exposition on writing simulators in Ruby, but um, as I found out yesterday, I only have 30 minutes for this talk. So this is just going to be part one. So the introduction. Oh, wow, we got lag. Um, I'm Brian L., uh, Brian Lyles. Um, I actually work at Thunderbolt Labs, the aforementioned Thunderbolt the company, um, under a bus company, and we do awesome things from, I do it from Baltimore, other guys do it from Portland, other guys do it from San Francisco, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, today we're here to talk about simulations, and really the kind of simulation I'm talking about is simulating a group of people doing stuff and, and actually figuring out what's gonna happen. So we have a group of people, they do stuff over time, and what they do is they get together. Like, um, this white chick gets with this black dude. <laughs> um, this black dude gets with this other white chick. Um, this white chick right here gets with this guy with the, um, the V-shaped forehead, kind of cool guy, artistic. And um, this guy goes both ways. He gets with everybody. So we're going to talk about modeling this. And why are we going to talk about modeling this? Well, let me show you why. Sound guy. God. But I didn't want to I'm just kidding. I didn't trust him. I didn't know I could catch dog in playground. We were in love, so I didn't think about it. All I did is trade lunchables. Every year, two million kids are infected with cooties. <laughs> why didn't you tell me, baby? I thought cooties was something that happened to other kids. Cooties! I just wanted to play tag. I never thought I'd be it. And the numbers are growing. I blame myself. Shh. I made a big mistake. And even though a vaccine is available, circle, circle, dot, dot, now you have the cootie shop. Most children never get inoculated. You may have cooties. And not even know it. I wish I would have told it. Speak to your kids about cooties before cooties speaks to them first. What do I do now? So um, I'm here today to talk about the epidemic of cooties. I mean, I'm sure some of you in this audience have cooties right now. So um, what I'm trying to do is we're going to build a simulation to help um, world policymakers and public health people um, understand the effects of cooties on a population. So what would I do? Well, of course, what I would do is build Cootie Sim 2012. And because this is an arbitrary thing, and um, let me pick an arbitrary language to build it in. So I'm going to build my Cootie simulator in Ruby. And first of all, I know what you guys are thinking. If you're going to build anything performant, why would you build it in Ruby? Well, why not? Um, Ruby is extremely expressive. Um, if you use things like JRuby, you have full power of the JVM. Um, if you use MRI, it's quick in some things, not in others. Um, so let's talk more about the simulation. So I'm actually, there's two types of real simulations. There's, sto there's stochastic and deterministic. Um, the difference is deterministic simulations actually run the same way, given the same set of inputs every single time. Um, and stochastic actually uses, um, is this the, um, we won't step on the carpet, it actually uses random inputs. So we're actually going to use random inputs. And I just wanted to get that out of the question, out of the way in case somebody was a smart ass and wanted to ask me what kind of simulation we're going to build. So to build our simulation, what we're going to do is we're going to define inputs. We're going to compute, and we're going to analyze the outputs. Very simple. And anyone in this, and what I'm trying to prove is that anyone in this crowd who actually can code in Ruby even a little bit can write this kind of stuff very simply. So um, to throw some code at you, because we are at a RubyConf, this is what my simulation does. It took me about 40 seconds to write this and just throw up a slide of this is what our simulation does. I'm not going to explain this, but basically, I'm going to explain it. Um, basically, you have people, and then you um, run some kind of loop with simulations, and you report on that. 
Now, let's go into this. So we're going to define our inputs. And actually what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to build up an app that I'll actually show you run, and this will be most of the code. So we're going to have a simulator. Because so, we're using Ruby, we have to use classes. You'll notice my last class, my last slide didn't have any classes on there, so I have to have a class. So you create a class named simulator. We're defining inputs. And the next thing you want to do is compute. And really for our simulator, all we need to do is we need to create pairs, and then we need to transmit our cooties, and then we need to um, progress the, in, the cooties, because you know what, um, cooties actually, there's a cooties disease, there's a cooties infection, and there's a cooties disease. You don't want the cooties disease. And then we're going to analyze the output. Simple things here. We're just going to actually just print it out to the screen at first. So let's go into this even more. So um, with our Cootie simulator, our simulator works day by day. So every day, we're going to create new pairs of people. Everybody goes out to the playground, and they go find somebody to pair with. And, um, and then we're going to see what happens. So how do we create pairs? Well, this is very simple. Creating pairs is um, we just actually have a, we have, an, uh, we have a method for people not in pairs for the particular iteration. And then we shuffle each slice, and we map. Um, one thing I want to point about this, um, I actually asked everybody at Thunderbolt to run this, and even they didn't realize that this code will not run in Ruby 1.8. Um, it can't run in Ruby 1.8 because of the dots. Um, Ruby 1.9 got smarter and said that, hey, we want to do it Java style and be able to um, have like a builder type pattern and be able to put like dot shuffle dot each slice. In Ruby 1.8, you can't do it. You actually have to have the dot on the other end. I'm glad they actually made that change. But really simple code here. And then we want to transmit cooties. And how do we transmit cooties? Well, very simple. All we need to do is um, a person has an infect and an acquire. And what they do is if it, people are in pairs, and you, you, you infect someone, and then they acquire the disease. So like I'm saying, so what I'm showing here is this very little code to, sh to actually move this forward. And then we want to track infection progress. And once again, you know this is Ruby because, it, because it, all the indentation, 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 so um, very simply, once again, and I promise I will not throw too much more code at you guys. I just like to see it on the screen because I wrote it. Um, so, but um, so like I said, this is the t this is not deterministic. This is stochastic, and you notice that I have if rand. Um, that right there means that every single time it runs, it'll actually will have different types of um, outputs. So one thing to say: this is not going to be fast, and I'll show you why this is not going to be fast. Uh, when I run this for, let's say, 365 iterations, so let's say one year, with 100 people, it takes 28, it takes 28 seconds on my Mac. Um, my Mac is pretty fast. I actually have one of these new fangled Macs. And um, it, it actually ranges from like 28 to 50 seconds. But that's only 365, that's only one year with 100 people. That's not modeling anything. So let's look at why Ruby is not fast. So this right here is actually output from RubyProf. Anyone here? Use RubyProf? Why is everybody's hand not up? You should use RubyProf. I know most of us do web apps, and they don't have to be fast because they, you cache, and that's how you make web apps fast. But in the real world, you got to use RubyProf. And what RubyProf says, what we already know, um, going through arrays is slow, especially when you have very large arrays. So I um, want to talk about, anyone here know big O notation? Can people tell me the difference between like um, log between like um, log square and um, n squared. What's the difference between like n squared and one? Anyone know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, really, um, Ruby arrays, worst case, are um, if you want to go through, if you want to actually iterate through an array, worst case is um, order of n, because you have to look at every single host, everything in there. Um, one thing I don't like about Ruby that I really wish Ruby had was um, better data structures. I mean, you can create them, but out the box, you get a hash, you get a scalar, you get an array, and you can and you don't even get a you don't even get a cool array. You don't even get like a linked list array. You get this just an array. Did you? So, um, what other things can we do to speed this up? Well, um, another thing you can do to speed this up is you can run more than one thing at a time. So, let's imagine that on enumerable, we actually had a parallel each. And what it did is, as it went through, it would actually create a, it would create a thread, and it would yield, and then it would do a cleanup for the thread, and then you could actually run, whenever you iterate it through an array with each, you could actually do more than one thing at a time. Um, and you know what? Someone thought this was a good idea. Jim install Peach. 
Um, you guys can't see what this says because I, 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 if I, anyone saw this slide, it actually says YMMV. And the reason it does say that is because um, you don't want to do this. Um, don't use, don't Jim install Peach. Uh, it'll actually make it slower because really what it does, it tries to create a thread pool and it actually runs each. It actually breaks up your each and tries to run it in a thread pool. But the problem with Ruby is um, creating a thread is not very fast. So by the time you create your thread, if you have something that runs in one millisecond, you've already lost out. So don't do that. So anyone know what this is? Yes, this is PerfTools. This is output from PerfTools. So the difference between RubyProf and PerfTools is PerfTools is a sampler, and RubyProf is a proper profiler. And what, Ruby, what, what PerfTools will do will actually add um, set iterations in your code. It'll actually see what's running. And right now, we can see that we spend a crap ton of time in the garbage collector, and we spend a crap ton of time in um, going through, once again, um, iterating through an enumerable. So what can we do about this? Oh, we're not going to talk about that yet. So I was trying to illustrate the point here that um, we have 100 people times 360 or 3,650 3, iterations. I mean, that's, 300, that's 365,000 actions. And that's just for a very small simulation. So um, I have to have one slide in my talk that has like cool effects, and this one might be it. There it goes. So I found that I could do this Star Trek thing, or this um, Star Wars thing, and I was really excited. I spent like 30 minutes on this. <laughs> um, so, um, so here's where we want to be. We want to actually find a population of a million people. So think about it. That's three billion actions. Um, I'm a computer guy, not a math guy. <laughs> so um, this talk is about simulations, but really what I'm getting down to is how do we make Ruby faster? Um, I'll tell you one secret. You can't make Ruby faster. It's impossible because you just can't. But there's two things we can do. We can run less code or we can do more than one thing, more than one thing at once. So let's look at this. Using um, MRI 1.9, um, whenever we execute code, we execute and pretend that this thing right here is your CPU because this is how your CPU looks. It has, and mine has four cores plus, two hyper, or plus four hyperthreaded cores. We're not going to talk about that. So I can run one task, two tasks, three tasks. If I do thread.new, what happens is I still all on one core, but I can do more than one thing on one core. So what, what does that mean? I can, it, at best, I'm only using 25% of my CPU with MRI for one process. Anybody want to refute that? OK, just making sure. <laughs> so with JRuby. Um, JRuby, same thing, one, two, three, three serial actions, or three synchronous actions. Um, whenever I do three, thread that new in there, um, I can actually go across my cores. So this makes you think, well, why in the hell would I ever use MRI? Well, I can give you like 100,000 reasons why you would. Um, it starts up slow, um, it takes a while to spin up, and um, it uses more memory, and it's not compatible, and a couple other things. So, but you have to understand that um, whenever you want to do these kind of simulations, oh, what are you doing? No, and you know what? You are absolutely correct. You know, and I will not refute that because if you actually if you go into Activity Monitor, you can't see that it does go above 100% but only a little bit. And the problem is, even with Turbo Boost, so let's say my Mac is a, is a 2.7 gigahertz um, i7, it Turbo Boosts to 3.7. It's not even, it's not like it's Turbo Boosting to like 11. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my first thing. Um, if you want to do something performant in Ruby and you have Ruby code that you just written on MRI and you, want, and you wonder why it's so slow, just take it out and run it in um, JRuby. I have made no tweaks to my app and I ran it in JRuby, and it actually ran in less than half the time. That's a weird case, but it did run in less than half the time. How much time do we have? Lots. So um, here's a weird section. How do you do more than one thing at once in MRI? Well, you can use queues. Um, real popular thing that queues right now, um, Redis backed. Who, how many people here use Rescue? People here love Rescue? <laughs> 
Um, how many people use Sidekick? How many people love Sidekick? Wow, no, uh, one guy likes Sidekick. Um, Sidekick is awesome, but let me tell you why I can't use it in my simulation. Sidekick is like the fire hose of Redis back queues. You can, um, sure, I think even on the page, the guy Mike says that you can like do 100,000 actions per second. But what if I don't want to do 100,000 actions per second? What if I want to put, what if I want to um, create one batch that has, let's say, 95,000 things in there and create a second batch that creates 95,000 things? With, with Sidekick, I can never be guaranteed that the queue is empty and I can move on to my next iteration. So really, it's like up and down, up and down, and it actually doesn't work very well. Not saying that Sidekick doesn't work very well, it doesn't work very well for me. So how many people here have used Girl Friday? Um, Girl Friday is awesome, and actually it's even extra awesome under um, JRuby whenever, uh, whenever you, when you can use real threads. Um, I, invest, I expect everybody to check it out. Actually, the same guy that wrote Sidekick wrote Girl Friday. This guy's really, this guy's really on some queues. Um, other types of um, queuing are memory backed. Um, RabbitMQ, did I really write memory backed? Oh, I, I'm sorry here. Um, it's not so that, it should be like AMQ backed. Um, so people doing um, high, high concurrency and, and a high amount of traffic using things like um, um, AMPQs or AMQ, yes, you know what I'm saying. So, and then there's also um, DB backed. Um, does anyone, oh wow, I'm going, this is Android with, um, with um, Apple, it's not working well. So um, socket-based concurrency, um, people are using um, zero MQ and D-cell. Um, anyone here use D-cell? I'm using D-cell, so I guess I can raise my hand. So moving on to something more exciting, um, statistics. Anyone here good at statistics? Statistics? I can't even say the word. Huh? So um, with, whenever you're um, doing things of this nature with simulations, you're gonna have a lot of stats coming out. So um, important things to know, uh, mean, median, variance, standard deviation. Um, everybody knows the mean, the mean, add it up, divided by the number of things that you added up, you get the mean. Median's the number in the middle. You know what the variance is? Variance is how much the numbers vary, but no one really uses variance. People actually use standard deviation, which is the square root. Is it the square root of the, of the standard devi of the variance? That's what it is. See, I'm, I'm learning. Actually, um, I know Randall Thomas is not here. He's going to do a talk with. Oh, you're brown. I can't see you. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, standard deviation, square root variance. <laughs> so, um, another cool thing, and I was actually I was just talking to somebody a little while ago. Um, I don't do much open source, so when I do open source, I like to talk about it. So um, Jim install Vose, and there is no disclaimer underneath this. Um, what Vose is, is a Ruby implementation of the Vose alias method. And what the Vose alias method is, is a way to um, sample, um, a sample probabilities in, in real time. And I'll show you one cool thing you can do with it. So let's say you had a die, and the die had six, it's a six-sided die, we're not playing D&D D &D here, it's a six-sided die, and you're playing craps or something, and you roll it. Um, What's the probability that a two comes up? This is what, the, this is what I'm sampling here. So I have, uh, have an array with six items, one, two, three, four, five, six in there. And what I'm doing is I'm actually sampling this a whole bunch of times to make sure that um, one through six come up evenly. And you can easily do this with RAND, same code with RAND. Um, I did use an inject. And actually, Tamar Slay, I showed him this code, and he's like, what are you trying to do, brain fuck me? He does not like um, inject. I like inject for this kind of stuff. Huh? Um, Ryan Davis, yes. How you doing? <laughs> now, actually, I only I usually don't use inject, but I wanted to like I was explaining to him I wanted this to show up on one, so I did use inject. And really, all I'm trying to do is show that um, it's the same amount of code. And actually, right here, um, Rand is actually faster than my my Vos alias method. But I'll show you something that Rand can't do. So what if you had a crooked dial like I would like to roll with, um, and your six actually comes up your six actually comes up more often than any, or actually your one comes up more often than any other number. So this is what the Volos alias method is for. Um, actually, I can actually say that my, my one comes up more often. And you're like, well, why would I do this? So if you're sampling mortality rates in a group of people, and you say that 10% of the people die at 70 and 10% die at 71, or no, even better yet, you have a, you have a 0.01 chance to die at 70, a 0.01 chance to die at 71, and then you have like a 0.03 chance to die at 72, 
You pop all those in an array, you, pa you pass that to the Bulls Elias method, and you just choose next. And it'll tell you when you die. <laughs> so, moving on. So, um, graphing. Um, we like graphing. Um, I know most of you guys are probably familiar with more like high charts, jqplot, things like that. Um, this is not a web app, so there's none of that. Um, so, if you want to do trend graphing, and actually, um, a very important thing is I run this simulation a lot of times. Sometimes I run it, you know, maybe a couple hundred times a day. And what I'm trying to do is um, actually a slow iteration, a slow day for me would be one millisecond. So this is the kind of this is the kind of level that I'm working on. Slow iteration is one millisecond. Actually, in, in Java, it's way less than one millisecond. It's like it's a, like a quarter of a millisecond to run one day. But so what I want to do is I I graph all this stuff. So this is a graph of um, this is a graph of how long it took over time. And you'll notice that um, it goes up linearly, and then it gets up here. Uh, my guess, all this stuff up here is actually, um, I was getting into um, Ruby garbage collection. And that's actually, that's what happened. Garbage collection started happening a lot more often. So it actually got a little bit off kilter. Um, this right here is the same code, and it's actually JRuby. So what you can see right here, anyone know what this right here is? I'm, yeah, it's Hotspot. It's actually, it is, it's Hotspot. So it was actually, it was, JRuby actually without Hotspot would be slow as crap. So it goes up, and then Hotspot kicks in. And you notice that the slope of the line is actually way less. And um, this is the clue that um, for things that you need to be performant in, uh, I wouldn't say your web apps, those are weird. But if you're actually writing performant Ruby, I would notice oxymoron, um, look at JRuby. Um, notice I didn't do Art Rubinius or Maglev. Um, I love those projects as, um, ideals, because I'm idealistic, but I wouldn't really use them for this. So um, how did I do that? Um, so I tried doing it in Ruby and then realized that um, there's much better things out there. Um, this is R, and I know a lot of people in here want to be experts at R because you can write cool code that no one can understand here. Like on this third line where it has the myGG with the arrow pointing to it, that's actually I know it's, a, it's like an equal sign, or it's like a, a pinned onto it sign, but I really don't understand how it works. This is actually just all scarfed off the internet, curricolted for this talk. But it, what it did is it does create these graphs. I do know what the, the next to last line does. It sets the um, output file name. <laughs> so that's R. So the next thing you want to do is visualization. And a cool thing that you can do is, um, and this is actually something very interesting to me. So I created all these, um, so I created these graphs, all, and I wanted to see from patient zero, like person one always has cooties. Who is person one giving it to? So if you look all the way at person one, and then down here at person eight, this is actually, I just drew this little graph here, and um, this is just graph viz. And, it's actually very easy code. Um, you guys should definitely look at GraphBiz if you're doing um, this kind of visualization. It's, I mean, look, at, it's really simple. I actually generate this from Ruby. More cool effects from Keynote. So back on to building a simulator. How much time do I have? Oh my gosh. Um, a simulator goes around and around. Um, it's a loop. Um, like I said before, there's people. Um, and every single day, um, we have a selection of people who are available to run. And then when, ha when those people are available to run, what we do is we pair those people up. So we know that this old guy likes little girls. And um, actually, that's just how it happened. I didn't really pick it like that. And, um, and then I guess this um, Asian dude with long hair is not a girl. Um, and this other girl, they like each other. And this black guy is just hanging out. So when they, pa when they pair, then they, um, they share cooties. And this is my visualization of cooties being shared. So um, how do you make it fast? Um, one thing to do is be kind to MRI's GC. Um, does anyone here know why Rails is slow? Besides Ryan, I'm sure he knows why Rails is slow. Um, one reason Rails is slow, if you ever um, dumped it, like dumped memory, like object space, Rails creates a shit ton of strings. So you know one thing to do? Don't run, just don't create any strings. That'll be much easier. Um, also, run with more than one process. And um, look outside of MRI. And um, when you're looking outside of MRI, remember I said before that JRuby is not compatible? And I actually, I brought this up. I refuse to go into the JRuby bug tracker because they say that um, it's going to be Ruby 193 compatible. 
Um, in, Ruby, in Ruby, you can actually pass a range to Rand. Not a lot of people do this, but I wanted to do this. I want to be able to say between day, and I want to have a relationship that starts on day one, or ends one day from now, or seven days from now. The best way to do this would be Rand with a range. You can't do this in JRuby. So you have to be very careful about this. So you have to make sure that you're testing on both platforms. Um, and notice it runs on um, Ruby 1.9.3 just fine. Um, you might also want to think about other languages. Um, I literally spent two weeks trying to write this in Clojure. <laughs> and you know something? That's exactly how I feel about it now. <laughs> and um, and not saying that Clojure is a bad language. I'm just saying that, you know what? Um, we're very good at imperative languages. And I have yet to find a definitive problem that I cannot solve faster, and this is just me, in my imperative languages than I can solve in a functional language. I mean, I'm sure there are use cases. Most of us won't run into them. So um, Ruby is a compromise. Um, there's a compromise on speed. Um, there's a compromise on just not knowing what's going on. You can, hook up, you can hook up Visual VM to JRuby, but you will not get the same view that you would get if you hooked up to a a regular um, old uh, Java project. So um, I didn't. So we're actually. I was going to have bring up some code, and I actually I have two minutes. So I'm going to. I have a couple minutes, right? Yes. yes. Um, there's no timer here, so I'm just you know I'm just winging it. it, it no, we have, time. we have five minutes. All right, five minutes. So I, I'm going to show you um, how easy it is to um, write these kind of simulators in Ruby. And don't make fun of my editor. Um, I use a I use Sublime Text, and, and what I'm going to try to do here is, um, can you guys see that? Should I make it bigger? All right, I'll make it bigger anyways. <laughs> so what I have here is um, my, my Simulation Charlie. And the reason I call it Simulation Charlie is because um, I know we have a version control, but whenever you're writing code for a talk, Using version control is actually very hard, for me at least. So I, there is no version control on this. I just actually just did it old school, like Cold Fusion guys would, and actually just copied the file to a new name every, for every iteration. So what I have here is a, um, I'm going to drag over a terminal as well. There we go. I have a terminal, and there's my IP address. And um, so I have uh, two, I have, let me see, tab. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, sad, um, sad trombone me, somebody. There we go. There we go. So we'll just type in the, the top left corner of the screen. So I have two versions of this thing. And um, so if I run the simulator, over, let's say, we'll run it over 10 years with 100 people from, um, from Ruby. And you know, it runs, it runs fairly fast. But whenever I start, whenever I go up to 100 years, um, you can see that, hey, you like, you're thinking it's scrolling really quickly. You can actually control the number by changing the modulus in the print. So, um, so you think it's pretty fast. But look, this is the same code. And and actually, this is like a little preview. Um, I'm talking at um, Windy City Rails about cool shell tricks. Um, look what I'm getting ready to do. Uh, two terminals sharing history. That's pretty awesome. You should know how to do this. So um, the same file actually running under JRuby. It actually runs way faster. So that's five seconds versus um, six seconds. That's way faster And whenever you're doing simulations. I mean, it's, it's really, it's like a few thousand milliseconds. So what, think how many nanoseconds or microseconds that is. That's actually pretty fast. Um, but, you know, here's the worst thing, and I hate this because I am a Rubyist. Um, we actually have a, a Java version of the simulation, and we'll run it with the same constraints. And this is why you should always look outside of your comfort zone. <laughs> so, um, I can make it faster in Ruby, but it's still going to be slower than Java or C++. So that's the lesson to be learned from this, this little talk. Um, so thank you guys for not heckling me too much. Uh, <laughs> this has been fun.